I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, normally, I'm in uniform with my uh, too loud vest, uh, but I didn't know until today that I'd be even part of this program, and so I'm very happy to learn that my schedule would allow it and it could fit in very nicely. So forgive my casual attire uh, this evening. Uh, let me say just a couple of things. There's a bank of telescopes over here. These are the personal telescopes of amateur astronomers, and you need to know something about the community of amateur astronomers. First of all, if someone came up to you and said, I am an amateur neurosurgeon, um, you would surely walk the other way. If someone said, I'm an amateur lawyer, for most things, for which, this is New York City, of course, so this, our acoustic wallpaper is with us nightly. So, most things, if you put the word amateur in front of it, it would be some sort of lesser version of what the word would be without it. However, amateur astronomy, if you say you're an amateur astronomer, that is a badge of courage, a badge of honor, a badge of accomplishment. These are people who built their own telescopes, who know more about the night sky than professional astrophysicists, the people who grind their own mirrors and lenses, and so, if you ever wanted access to the night sky, but never wanted to become a professional scientist to do so, there are people here to talk to. They'll tell you what clubs to join. We have clubs represented from the entire region, as far away as Rockland and Nassau County and Jersey. And so I just want to, everyone right now give it up for the calling of all these telescopes. I was an amateur astronomer as a kid. I had a telescope, my first telescope, for my 12th birthday. I got a bigger telescope a couple of years later. Then I had access to really big telescopes on mountaintops. And so I, I, then I, I was good at that point. I was good, good to go. Uh, tonight, uh, it's still, it's not quite heavy overcast, but I don't see any holes to the real sky. Now here's an interesting point, did you know that New York City leads the world in per capita ownership of telescopes. <laughs> now, have, have you ever seen the night sky from New York City? <laughs> so what are people doing with these telescopes? <laughs> so when it's cloudy out, my blinds are closed. <laughs> Uh, actually, one of the great things to do with an amateur telescope, if the sky is not otherwise available, you find a terrestrial, an Earth-based target to point the telescope to because you know in your mind how far away it is or what the object is, and you see how good the telescope gets you there. Telescopes, if we had a sight line to the Statue of Liberty, for example, you'd be able to see like the torch, where people walking around, they, are they, they let you up in their face now? Did they oh, reopen it? I don't remember. You see people walking around up in the... That's, that's right, there you go. So you people walking around up in the head of the Statue of Liberty. So you get a sense of the power of these telescopes. So even if the sky does not show up tonight, definitely go over, check out the scopes. There's nothing an amateur astronomer loves more than his telescope. Just ask any question about the telescope, you'll be there for two hours hearing about it. Okay? And you'll get advice on what telescopes to buy for yourself and what your needs are. Not all telescopes are made for all people. If you're lazy, you want a light telescope easy to transport. If you are committed, you might buy a bigger telescope. It's heavier, you need a couple of people, one to carry the tripod, one to carry the, the, the business end where the lenses are. And so this evening, it should be a celebration of bringing the universe down to Earth in your backyard. And in Manhattan, where there are no backyards, it happens in our public parks. In fact, I have it in mind, I haven't done it recently, I only recently bought a telescope in my later years, but one of my goals is to just go out in the middle of the street, right during rush hour, okay? People, this works better in the winter, because rush hour, it's dark. And just look up and invite people to just check out the universe. And I did this long ago, and I said, hey, you want to see Saturn? And people, like, were scared, you know? <laughs> They're wondering what, you know, and so, so, but in fact, with backyard-sized telescope, you can see Saturn's ring, moons of Saturn, the 
the bands, the weather bands on Jupiter, craters and mountains and valleys on the moon. With the right filters, you can see spots on the sun, which professionally we officially call sun spots, spots on the sun. Unlike chemists and biologists, what do they do when they make up a word? They make the biggest possible word they could possibly come up with. You've seen it. What's the basic molecule of the human body? And your deoxyribonucleic acid. That's like tensile. The beginning of Earth, space, time, every, Big Bang. <laughs> Two syllables, right there. Big red stars, red giants. These are official terms that we have all one syllable. We're a one syllable community, because the universe is complicated enough. I have to sit there put big words just to try to communicate it. And so, this is what this evening will be. And uh, it's, I'm, I'm looking, I don't see, it's not, I, it's still a little bit cloudy, so we have a little extra time together, because otherwise I would have said, go forth. So in this extra time together, do you have any questions about the universe? <laughs> a question right here, the front row, yes. What are the purpose of, what do dark holes do exactly? What do black holes do? They eat. What's the point of that? They eat. They have such strong gravity, they eat and never throw up. Okay? Oh, what's the point of it? I don't know. I never asked it. I don't want to get close to it. That, that would be a single time experiment. One of those experiments is like, this will be the last thing I ever do in my life, is to experiment on a black hole. Actually, actually, Stephen Hawking showed that black holes evaporate very slowly, particle by particle, all right? But usually they'll eat faster than they evaporate. So don't, don't bank on evaporating yourself out of a black hole, all right? That, that won't be pretty, even if it did. We got a, a, another couple of questions, right, front row here, yeah. Are there any... Right. Are there any telescopes or anything we can do at the Hayden Planetarium? Okay. Are there any telescopes at the Hayden Planetarium? It sounds like the natural place to put a telescope, doesn't it? The planetarium. But in fact, in the planetarium, we have access to the data sets that have been collected across the universe. And that is what we give you inside the dome of the Hayden Planetarium. We give it to you in two ways. One, the night sky as seen from Earth. That's with the projector. That's what you all remember. You go there and they point out the constellations. But beyond that, we have digital projectors. You load them up with the data from telescopes such as James Webb. You load them up and you can travel across the universe. So it's no longer just what does the night sky look like from Earth. It's what does the light, night sky look like from another galaxy. And so, it's, so in some ways it goes beyond what a single telescope will bring you because it collates all of those data in order to give you the universe as we know it. In fact, there is a YouTube video that we produce at the museum that has gone viral. It's got five and a half million views. It's called The Known Universe. Google it tonight. The Known Universe. It is a seven minute zoom from the, Him the Himalayan mountains of Earth. Earth shrinks down, you see the orbit of the moon, that shrinks down, you see the orbit of the Earth, that shrinks down, the solar system recedes to insignificance, you see the star fields that we're normally familiar with at night, those shrink down.